Okay, let's now get into the painting that we've been waiting to do since we created our new uh, gouache palette here. So let's do a painting of my girlfriend Vanessa's cat. <laughs> and Well, their family cat. But uh, yeah, we're going to use try and uh, do a really colorful kind of more exaggerated color for the painting. And uh, just taking advantage of our high chroma color scheme and painting something that's relatively low chroma and seeing what happens with that. So we'll just go ahead and start here. I won't do a lot of talking unless I come up with the insights as I paint here. My reference. And just for fun, I'm gonna take some colors that were already on my palette here and try and just use them as a base of color to work from. Maybe I'll use this as the background color for now. That in here. Nothing fancy just yet. start with a base kind of cool yellow maybe mix it into some of this green here kind of offset the um, purples and paints that I got going on a bit wild color scheme happening here but we'll tone it down as we go These colors are just the base to go over. Start doing that. Um, looking at the values. And uh, let's take a look at our color chart. And try and figure out what are the browns that we're going to use here. So, my color chart. And I'm going to say that. We're going to start with the range of here. So we got like rose, sky blue, leaf green, and brilliant violet, magenta. So just mixing reds into greens will get me, I think, the um, the browns that I want. Gent going here. colors I don't 
I'm not trying to make any hard edges quite yet. chart again. It's a brilliant violet leaf green. The brown we come up with. So I'll grab a little brilliant violet. A little bit of green. A highly pigmented color. But I believe that this is going to be like the darkest dark we can make in this palette. Let's be careful with that. In case anyone is wondering, this is a Tricale Onyx Bright, which is a really soft brush and I don't necessarily recommend it for, for gouache until you really know what you're doing because it soaks up a lot of water, which is usually a no-no with gouache. So it's not going to be like a um, thing you use that often, but it's okay in the beginning because it lets us do these soft edges. It's much better suited for watercolor for that reason. So it's not one I would necessarily recommend to pick up. It's just one that I happen to have handy. I just wanted to see what would happen if I used it for this painting. You know, so far so good, but I have a lot of experience working with all sorts of different brushes, so. got going on in the background is this kind of grayish orange so I'm gonna look in my color chart here and figure out which one it is 
kind of close to cat orange, gamboge, and white. So we'll go ahead and do that. So establishing the background at this point is going to help you um, determine the rest of the colors in the paint. not the most opaque color I'm putting on the um, top of that. The colors interact with each other because of their semi-opacity onto each other. Next, we'll try and do the colors of these blankets that she's sitting on. And they're kind of going to be more around this range here, but Cobalt blue, brilliant violet, mixed with leaf green, jade, and white. So we're going to get some kind of colorful grays. Cobalt blue. A little bit of brilliant violet. Mixed with leaf green. Or this is jade. A little bit of leaf green. Get some white happening. Modify as needed. That's pretty good. One advantage that these softer brushes have, though, is that um, their points tend to stay sharper and maintain their sharpness through the brush stroke. Whereas the ones that are more synthetic tend to kind of get more ragged as they lose their the water content. But since these hold a lot of water, they get to keep that same character of the brushwork. You'll see the difference when we use when we switch to uh, it's just a um, a golden tack on from Trucal. And we'll try and uh, figure out the color of prefer in the light. I'd say it's probably somewhere probably in this range, kind of golden, say like a little bit of cat orange. Uh, well, I like this magenta, cat yellow light, magenta maybe a little bit of gamboge, make it 
um, grayer by adding white to it. So let's do that. Magenta, cat yellow. bit of violet, perhaps white. paint with colorful grays so staying within these this color range it's a little bit unnatural for me but yeah pretty good to get out of my comfort zone for now Get us in the range. I think so, but that's a little too cold still. So let's add some. Rose. This. I like that. Just a nice color. Working in this color range, I think that's the idea is getting just fun color interactions rather than trying to be really accurate to what I'm seeing. This is just not going to be. you more money in the long run anyway um, the earth pigments are a lot less expensive than the cadmium stuff so
these nice colorful browns happening in her face, which is nice. little bits of neon yellow coming through or it's kind of more of a neon green but since they interact well with, with what's happening over it here. Establish that light and dark is happening here. Fill in some parts I haven't yet covered. establish our darkest darks happening here.
from a color. to work in this value range but I feel like it's going too cold on me so I got warm up what's happening here a little bit of things I like to try and go in and really detail out a little area to get things knowing to get things to where I know they're supposed to get to so like if I finish an eye for example I know what level everything else is gonna have to get to just clarifies things for me in that way.
now from there we can just expand out Especially if it has a lot of yellows and oranges in it. color happening there, but I like it. shape with an approximate color if I can get the values correct then the colors all the different little colors inside this painting will read as true to life even if they are kind of pushed really high in the saturation range.
just a little kind of choppy to me. shadow so I'm kind of going over what I had before with that instead.
it's all just detail work at this point. I feel like everything is pretty well established. Pretty happy with the color and values that are going on, so. Just continuing to add all the little things that really help make this a finished painting. Trying not to lose anything in the process. up the rest of the painting if there's anywhere else that needs to add a bit more detail to don't go overboard with detail everywhere because then that loses the point of focus or it doesn't lose it necessarily but it weakens it with you want the point of focus to be as strong as possible for your paint to be as engaging as possible so just gonna sort of tidy up a few spots just add a little bit here and there some of these parts feel a little bit more like there's something
just for the finish, I'll add a little bit of pattern to the blanket. She's on. Yeah. sign the thing. to be learned is that if you have um, a reference you're working from you really like the subject but the color isn't something that you're particularly thrilled about try using a really highly saturated palette such as this one and see if you can bring some interest into it in that way just do some taping here a better way to tape a circle to paper let me know <laughs> 